Welcome back to 10, 10, 10. Today, we're looking at the third commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7. In my experience, many understand this, the third commandment, to be primarily about blasphemy. To misuse the name of the Lord, or as some translations state, to take the Lord's name in vain, is seen to be when we use God's name as a swear word. In that sense, blasphemy is usually a symptom of distance from God. The sort of profanity is common amongst those who are not Christians, for whom the name of God is not personal. Their words are thoughtless and thereby meaningless. However, because all the commandments were written to and for believers, verse 7, your God, it implies a personal relationship. The blasphemous swearing aspect is only a very small part of the third commandment. So, what's in a name? A name is a word or expression by which a person is represented to us. It brings to mind the whole person, what I know about them and the impression they've made upon me. When people remember your name, it, it shows they care. And if they forget who you are, it can hurt. After all, my name is the most beautiful sound in the English language. The name of a monarch is a symbol of their honor, power, and kingdom. Likewise, each name of God embodies and represents some part of his glory. And each name he gives to people is also significant. The Good Shepherd, said Jesus in John 10 verse 3, calls his own sheep by name. No wonder they follow him. The measure of my love, he was telling them, is that I can put a name to each one of you. That is a mind-blowing thought. The master of the universe can pick you out of a crowd as surely as he called Zacchaeus by name down from his tree. He knows who you are and he never forgets your name. But there is something even more amazing than that. As well as calling us by our names, God invites us to call him by his name. When we hear people dropping formalities and using personal names, we assume that they're on friendly terms with each other. Because he loves us, God wants us to enjoy a close relationship with him. And he doesn't want that expression of intimacy to be one-sided. He invites us to use, but not abuse, his own name in return. What is God's name? It is I am. The name he told Moses in Exodus 3.14. I am who I am. This is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. The special name I am was given to the Israelites to assure them that God was not impossibly remote, but constantly with them in, in an intimate relationship. This reinforces the relational aspect of the Ten Commandments as one side of a conversation between friends. Until the Incarnation, when Jesus lived amongst us as a fully human being, God never revealed himself by any image. But each of his names was a self-revelation, showing aspects of his character. The Hebrew word for God, El, expressed his power, his eternity, and his all-seeing wisdom. The Hebrew word Adonai, which in English is Lord, conveys his all-embracing rule. Yahweh, God's own name for himself, assures us of his constant love and endless patience, as well as his sternness. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus invited his disciples to address God as Father, implying intimacy, relationship, and family. Jesus' own name, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, declares God's love in its most stupendous expression of all. The angel Gabriel told Mo to Joseph in Matthew 1.21, you are to give him the name Jesus, meaning the Lord saves because he will save his people from their sins. God's name, therefore, implies both his character and his nature. He is seen as holy, righteous, merciful, compassionate, loving, gentle, patient, as well as wrathful, 
judging and jealous. To misuse the name of the Lord is to talk about God in such a manner as to undermine any of his characteristics. So to those who see him only as a distant judging God, that is to undermine his loving, gentle, compassionate nature. But to only talk of his love and forgiveness, that is to undermine his holiness and righteous anger. We need to embrace all of his character. We misuse the Lord's name in areas of, first, intimacy. As Christians, we enjoy the incredible privilege of an unrestricted access to and into his presence. But when we approach the Almighty God, we must do so with reverence and awe. To shamble carelessly into his presence with our spiritual hands in our pockets is to abuse that privilege. Overfamiliarity with God erodes reverence, and that is an abuse which is as hateful to him as any expletive. An invitation to meet God at close quarters should make us tremble, as well as shout for joy. Second, honesty. In Old Testament times, people used God's name to convince others they were being honest. Some might say, as God is my witness. Because nothing escaped God's notice, you would not dare to call on his name to support an untruth. And by and large, God's people did not misuse his name in that way. What they actually did was far worse. Instead of swearing by God's name, it became common practice to take oaths by some object associated with him, like the temple or the altar. Such vows sounded impressive, but they were actually hot air and not worth anything. Jesus exposed this hypocritical hair splitting with his usual bluntness. He told his disciples that God wanted to protect the truth, not invade it. And he condemned the practice of using religious language to conceal dishonesty. How do we misuse God's name today when it comes to honesty? When we use a church activity as an excuse not to spend time with our family. When we tell folk about Jesus during office hours to the detriment of our jobs, and we use God's name to justify it. When we hide behind Christianity as a way of excusing shoddy, half-hearted, unenthusiastic work or commitment, thinking well, they ought to love me anyway. God's name is dishonored. It is misused. People who whitewash their lies and their lives by calling on God as a witness are misusing his name in a particularly repulsive way. Third, power. One of God's aims in revealing his name to his people was to provide them with supernatural resources. He wanted them to find answers to their prayers and protection in their crises by calling on their special relationship with him. Such is the power of Jesus' name that one day every knee will bow in submission to the authority of it. Philippians 2 verse 10. And his name is also a powerful resource for all Christians. John 14 verses 13 to 14. This is what Jesus said. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name. and I will do it. One way we misuse his name is to fail to use it as regularly and as confidently as we should. That's the sin of omission. Another misuse of God's power is to use his name selfishly and not to bring glory to the Father. Prayer is never intended to be used like some slot machine where the believer uses the name of Jesus as the magic wand to gain a favorable result. It's also possible to misuse God's name by claiming his approval for our own ideas. We must avoid the trap of playing the God card and saying, thus says the Lord, or the Lord told me to tell you. This side of heaven, we only see in part. So we must not be the Holy Spirit to others or even to ourselves. It is far more helpful and humble to say, I believe that God might be saying. God wants his name to be used, but he will never allow it to be owned. 
Jesus condemned this hypocrisy in Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Fourth witness. Outsiders judge our God by our integrity, our behavior. If we behave badly, it is God's reputation that suffers. If we live well as Christ's ambassadors, then his name is honored. Whenever a gap develops between our beliefs and our behavior, we misuse and dishonor the Lord's name when we call ourselves Christian. Misusing God's name is a serious health hazard in the Christian life. But there is one effective way to inoculate ourselves against that risk. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name. We can call God Father, but the closeness and the intimacy we enjoy must be controlled by the distance that awe and reverence demand. Quieten your mind and humbly ask the Holy Spirit to help you to choose every day to make God's name holy. If you do, then you will not misuse or dishonor it. Your worship will be uninhibited, but not casual. Your promises will be kept and never evaded. You will use his power to the full, but never selfishly. And your deeds will, at long last, match your words.